I mean, this is offensive to my intelligence. How can you know in advance? You see, this could just keep going on circularly forever, but yeah. Okay, more information you can find at the Journal of 9-11 Studies, and here's some of the authors, as well as, of course, uh, in these peer-reviewed established publications. Now, ah, Red and Great Ships, a lot of fun stuff to talk about, but it's scientifically fun in terms of what it means to uh, society. Well, that's up to us. It's an adventure to be in this with you um, worldwide uh, addressing these issues. An adventure to me. So in June of 07, I observed many of these red gray chips, as you see pictured here, in a sample of dust from the World Trade Center. We finally obtained uh, four independently collected samples, and the chain of custody is well established with witnesses, in some cases with videotape of the collector explaining how he or she collected the dust. Uh, by the way, we know that USGS has dust samples cause the, from the World Trade Center. We requested, we've requested uh, dust, and they say they just don't have enough. Uh, all four samples, this is a check we did, had the these, these same uh, active thermitic material, this red material, and it was see, has been seen independently now by Mark Basile in uh, working in Massachusetts. Here's the uh, electron microscope. Higher magnification using an electron microscope. We go in, you see the red layer on top. This is in the paper, so I'm going to go through this fast because you can read it in the active thermitic material paper. This is also from the paper. We see uh, aluminum, oxygen, silicon, iron, carbon, prominent, no zinc. Um, primer paint, we check this, the primer paint. This is a knee-jerk reaction of the debunkers. Oh, it's just primer paint from the, you know, painted onto the steel, it's just primer paint. Primer paint has lots of zinc, but we've gone a step further now. This is a new result that I want to show you. And that is, there is actually a monument for 9-11 that contains actual steel from the World Trade Center 7. The fellow who put the monument together, welded it, he went out, he's now a 9-11 truther, <laughs> and he went out and uh, scraped off some of the primer paint from this World Trade Center 7 steel. Now we're going to compare with this red material. And the result, drum roll, is that they, <laughs> thank you, on the left uh, is uh, the red material, the thermitic material. On the right is the primer paint. So are they the same or not? Well, they're, in, in the primer paint you see a lot of elements. Iron is Fe, uh, CO is cobalt, chromium, calcium, potassium, sulfur, silicon, aluminum, magnesium, and zinc prominently. Here's zinc over here too. It's going off the page. <laughs> see a little better there. There's, with this uh, method, you, you excite the atoms and they release x-rays and then you can identify the elements. The differences, I hope you can see, are distinct. The, the right is the primer paint and the upper one is, uh, uh, two plots upper, is the red material, you see? So the red material shows no zinc. Right away you see that. That was the cr critical factor. We knew there would be zinc in the primer paint. There is no zinc in the red material. And indeed, we do see zinc prominently in the uh, primer paint. Magnesium is also seen along with, uh, uh, let's see, chromium, prominent chromium peak, as you expect from the composition of the primer paint. They're not the same. We also had uh, a reaction from a debunker who said it's kaolinite. If you'd done a little checking, the USGS data shows uh, this uh, kaolinite. Sure enough, it has aluminum, oxygen, and silicon, but no iron. And, and uh, so it's just not the same. Furthermore, uh, the behavior, here's an independent sample. The behavior when we ignite this stuff, comparing and when we treat it with a paint solvent, it, these are entirely different behaviors between the primer paint and the red chips. So here's, for example, soaking uh, one of these red chips. It swells up, but it's still hard. When I soaked uh, the primer paint in MEK, which is a solvent, methyl ethyl ketone, the paint became very limp. You can do this experiment. See, that's the beauty of science. It doesn't matter whether you're a 9-11 truther, so to speak, like myself, I seek the truth, 
or if you're a debunker, or wh why is it the debunkers don't do experiments? This is what I like to know. <laughs> you know, you can do the experiment, it doesn't matter what your biases are. That's science, right? And when you do the experiment, then you publish, and somebody who wants to challenge you, he might be an atheist from, I don't know, it doesn't matter. You, you do the experiment, you get the same result. You see, that's the beauty of science. And then you find out facts that way. It's not like, oh, there's a big debate about this because oh, who says this and who says... No, it doesn't matter. It's experiments and peer-reviewed papers, you see? That's how we proceed in science, to get at the truth. Here's an x-ray diffraction pattern of a red chip. We're just starting into these studies now in earnest. And uh, we hope to learn more with this independent technique. Um, I want to point something out. As we look at high magnification, this is uh, 50,000 power uh, amplification in the electron microscope, we see, okay, let me point out to you these in the middle, if I can get there, these platelets, that's where the aluminum is held. These, these dots, you see the dots here? These fa uh, faceted dots, that's where the iron is held. And then this stuff out here that looks kind of gray, that's the organic, there's a lot of organic material. Now, the uniformity of these plate-like structures and the narrowness of them, these are remarkable. I have no idea how to make these things. And by the way, the aluminum we can separate from the silicon using MEK. So it's, it's a very interesting material. The iron oxide, these ultra-fine uh, fasted grains, plus the organic matrix. This is not building stuff that just falls down and makes this uh, wonderful nanothermite. I've heard that argument. I think, have you read the paper? Do you know how complex this is? <laughs> you see, this takes some considerable knowledge, uh, chemistry. In fact, uh, we have a couple of chemists on our scientific team, and we have not been able to make this stuff. We don't even know how to do these. See, aluminum oxidizes very quickly. Somehow the silicon layer has passivated the aluminum. That means it makes it insensitive uh, to the oxygen in the air so that in this matrix, it is preserved so that, you know, eight years after the event, this stuff still blows up when we uh, cause it to react. You see, we, we've got the flowing material and we've tried to stabilize the image for you so you can see this molten orange glowing material. There goes off the white wisp, which is, we think, then uh, aluminum oxide. There's an important thing to understand here, and that is thermite, ordinary thermite, which you can buy on eBay, is incendiary. It burns, well, you say slowly, even though it's over in a flash. <laughs> it's not explosive. It, it melts through stuff like steel. Ultra-fine grain nanothermite, now it's called, is an explosive, or it can be made. It can be tailored, actually, and explosive. This, below you see a photo, lower right, uh, from Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, which BBC asked if they could show this photo. It's a published paper. Uh, Lawrence Livermore Labs refused to allow BBC to show this publicly. Well, here I am. It's shown publicly. Please sue me. I need the, uh, to get the word out if that'll help. <laughs> but, you know, it's so funny. This uh, remarkable structure on the left is from, again, Livermore Labs, showing, again, this intimate mixing of iron oxide and aluminum in a sol gel for, uh, framework. It's remarkable stuff, this uh, nanothermite. And... Uh, here are the analyses uh, before and after ignition. Top is before. You see the composition. After, you see the aluminum is almost go all gone. It has gone off in, um, into the air, aluminum oxide, as this reacts. What you're left with is uh, iron, reduced iron. Now, now, see, before the oxygen is very, peak is very large compared to the iron peak. Afterwards, the oxygen peak is small, and we were able to determine that the iron has been reduced, that is, the oxygen has transferred from the iron to the aluminum. Don't worry, that won't be on the test. But you still have to read the papers, okay? <laughs> right. And where does the aluminum come from in these spheres in the dust, the bottom one, you see? That's an unusual uh, mix, iron, silicon, aluminum in a sphere. Some of them, the aluminum goes off more, but some of them, you know, it's trapped or whatever, and the aluminum's there. What an unusual mix. Where does that come from, if not from uh, this uh, thermite or 
nanothermite. Quoting from Livermore scientists, they published a fair amount. So you see, let's see what they say about this. By introducing a fuel metal, a quick pop quiz. Oh, the answer's there. Too bad. I was going to quiz you. <laughs> what is the fuel, such as aluminum, into the metal oxide, silicon oxide matrix? Okay, what's the metal oxide that we observed? Uh, iron oxide, great, in these red chips, right? The silicon oxide so is, is, is a matrix in which they're holding this um, fuel plus oxidizer. Energetic materials based on the thermite reactions can be fabricated. Now, organic additives, what's this, all this carbon doing in there? Can cause the generation of gas, that's what it's for, upon ignition of the material. So you expect gas to be generated, resulting in a composite material that can pre uh, perform pressure volume work. In other words, uh, as it explodes, you get this hot gas. That's the trick used with a C4 in a shape charge to produce this hot gas and molten metal that squirts through and cuts very quickly through steel. That's the trick. See, when I first saw this stuff, I could not understand what it was because there's silicon, which is not needed, I thought, in thermite, and carbon, what's that for? Well, now I know what the silicon, the silicon's part of the structure uh, in the sol gel for, uh, method uh, of formation, and the uh, carbon, the organic, you see, which has carbon, is used to generate gas. It all makes sense now. Now we have to do a comparison as good scientists. They, these scientists have pre previously have published what happens when nanothermite is ignited, that's the red curve. When we ignite an actual red-gray chip from the World Trade Center dust, we get the blue curve. This is done in a differential scanning calorimeter. Yes, that will be on the quiz. And uh, you see the narrowness of the peak tells you how rapidly, it gives you a, a good indication of how rapidly the reaction occurs. The height of the peak or the integrated area, rather, tells you the amount of energy that's released in the reaction. What we found is that, and also the, the temperature at which the uh, material ignites tells you quite a lot about its uh, nature as well. Now, let me just show you one thing. I'll come back. There's a lot of data here. You probably have to read the paper to really understand it. This is in a paper uh, published in uh, 2004. And again, these are the boys at Livermore Lab. And on the right, we have nanothermite, a very narrow peak at about, what, uh, five, I'm saying around 550 centigrade it goes off. Uh, the broader peak with ordinary thermite on the left goes off somewhere around 900,000 centigrade, higher temperature. So by going to finer uh, material in the nanothermite, the temperature goes down for ignition and the peak gets narrower. That's what we see with this amazing red material found in the World Trade Center dust, the blue curve. It's very narrow. It goes off rapidly. I, I, uh, my friend Dr. Ferris says, yes, it blows up, you know, when he's, he's done a number of these tests. And then the, uh, uh, the temperature is actually lower than what the Livermore uh, boys uh, did when they when they did their uh, nanothermite. So that's uh, you know it's a very interesting material. Read the paper for more detail on that. Here we go. First time this has ever been shown publicly. This is a a red chip at very slow motion going off. Very slow motion. These data were acquired by Mark Basil in Massachusetts using I don't know exactly how he did it, but uh, camera through a microscope and taking and then he hooked the uh, frames together to produce this uh, moving picture. So the red chip, you see the red there, gray on top, it swells, it turns black, gives off a gas, and then it flashes, boom. Now if this were confined, the, that gas might react uh, instead of just going off. I, we, that's an experiment uh, I'd like to see, but one more time. And you'll see the red gray chip very clearly. It's being heated on a stainless steel strip, gas given off, Flash goes through very rapidly. Again, this is a